we will continue with uh, our subject on solid propellant rockets. What is it we have done so far? Let us take a quick uh, review. We know that either whether the propellant is composite, whether it is double base or it could be nitroamine or it could be composite modified double base. I can write the burn rate as a linear regression rate r is equal to a p to the power n. We also told ourselves that well, if I have a rocket in which the burn surface area is s b, the equilibrium value of pressure I can derive as maybe the burning surface area into this particular exponent a. We had something like rho p here, we had c star here divided by a t over here to the power 1 divided by 1 minus n. How did this come? We said if I have a rocket, let us say we considered a simple scheme wherein I had propellant which was enclosed in a case. I had something like a nozzle here. We said the rate at which mass leaves through the nozzle m dot n can be written as p a t divided by c star where p is the pressure here and we said it is always choked at the throat therefore this is the volume I am considering and that is the mass at which is leaving the nozzle and the rate at which mass is getting generated from the burning of propellants we got that as equal to the regression rate is r and that was equal to s b into the propellant density into the burn rate r which is equal to a p to the power n so much kilograms per second. This is so much kilograms per second. We equated the two and then we find I take p over here I get 1 minus n I get s b a rho p into c star divided by a t and this is the equilibrium pressure. What does this tell us? Let us take a relook at this equation. We looked at it from the point of view of n told ourselves well n cannot be anywhere near 1 because then what happens for any small change here there is a large, large magnification here and therefore n should be very much less than 1 because if n is near 1 I get a very large exponent here and a small change can magnify into a large change in pressure. Therefore we say for from stable considerations well n must be very much less than 1. But we also learn to look at it graphically and what did we tell at that point in time? When we have n in the burn rate equation r is equal to a p to the power n if n is greater than 1 how does the burn rate law change as pressure changes let us make a plot or rather as burn rate increases if you have a given burning surface area a given density of propellant we can now plot the rate at which mass gets generated due to burning. In other words mass which gets generated depends on the burning surface area into the density of the propellant into the burn rate law. We want to plot it as a function of pressure. When n is equal greater than 1 well it keeps increasing as n becomes greater and greater rather when the value of n is greater than 1 when for high large values of n it the mass generation rate rapidly increases. If however n is less than 1 like for instance in the burn rate law n is less than 1 then the same mass generation rate will have something like a drooping characteristic this is for n less than 1 with variation of pressure this is for n greater than 1. How does the mass flow rate which leaves the nozzle change with pressure? We always told we have been writing this on and off m dot is equal to 1 over c star into p into a t rather the mass flow rate through the nozzle if now I call it as m dot n through the nozzle with respect to pressure will increase as a straight line. Therefore let us now plot the mass which leaves the nozzle as a function of mass generation rate for n is greater than 1 n is less than 1 and see whether we can draw some conclusions on 
the type of exponent n which we require. Let me now plot all the three together on a single graph. Let me have my axis here x axis which is mass generation or let us say mass which is leaving the nozzle as a function of pressure. Let me put the value first for n less than 1, I get a curve like this. If I have n greater than 1, let me title it, it is n less than 1. If I have n greater than 1, well the curve is like this. And what is the rate at which mass is leaving the nozzle? I, I show it by a white line again, maybe the curve is like this. Now we find that for n which is, which is greater than 1 and the mass which is leaving the nozzle, it is same at this point. Therefore, this will correspond to let us say equilibrium pressure for the case when n is less than 1 n is greater than 1, I am sorry, red line is for n greater than 1, therefore P equilibrium corresponding to let us say case 1. Let me also tell that maybe for n less than 1, maybe this is the P equilibrium value, let us say it is P equilibrium 2. I would like to examine whether are, are these two states which are possible, well theoretically this is the rate at which mass is leaving the nozzle, the rate at which mass is getting produced in the chamber and therefore this is the equilibrium pressure. Similarly, for n less than 1 this is the pressure. Let us try to get some idea whether these states are possible and if so, are there some problems in these equilibrium pressures. When n is greater than 1, let us say I have a small perturbation in pressure, a small perturbation can always come and let us say that the pressure reaches this value that means the pressure is slightly higher than the equilibrium value. Since the pressure is slightly higher, what we find at this point the mass generation rate is higher than the mass which is leaving the nozzle, therefore pressure will further increase. When pressure further increases, the mass generation rate is further higher increase, therefore this point cannot be a stable equilibrium point, but any small perturbation will make the pressure increase further and further till the motor sort of ruptures. If I now consider the points to the left of the equilibrium point. Let me say that maybe by some chance there is a small pressure perturbation and the pressure in the motor falls to a value less than the equilibrium pressure P E 1. Then what happens? The, the mass generation rate is lower than the mass which is flowing through the nozzle. In other words, mass flowing out through the nozzle is more than what is generated. Therefore, the pressure still falls, the pressure still falls, pressure still falls and it comes to extinction. Therefore, we tell ourselves well, in case n is greater than 1, I cannot really get an equilibrium pressure and even if I get small changes in it will allow it either to explode or to quench. Therefore, we tell ourselves n greater than 1 is not desirable or not possible. Let us examine the case when n in the rate law, what was the burn rate law? R is equal to a p to the power n. What is the value for, what is the value when it is less than 1, what is the state of equilibrium pressure? Let us put the same arguments again. If the pressure were to fall slightly less than the equilibrium value, well it has fallen, but now I find that the mass generation rate is higher than the mass which is leaving the nozzle and therefore it will go back to this particular state. If by chance it exceeds the state over here and comes over here, Again I find, well the mass leaving the nozzle is higher than the mass generation rate and it pushes it back. Therefore, it pushes it back, pushes it back to this point, therefore this point becomes let us say a stable equilibrium value. Therefore, the value of n less than 1 is possible and it gives rise to what we say is a stable burning. Therefore, in the burn rate law R is equal to AP to the power N, N must always be less than 1. This is all what we have done. Now, our time has come when we have to put everything together and say how do I design a motor? What is what, what I mean when I want to design a ro rocket? I must be able to generate a given thrust from the rocket and what is the thrust? We said is equal to Cf into P into AT. I drop the subscript PC because 
preset, I can put it in terms of the nozzle effectiveness into chamber pressure in 80, this is the thrust which is developed. Therefore, if I want a rocket to develop a particular thrust, I know that P equilibrium goes as SB, all this, this is constant, rho P is density, C star is a particular case of a propellant, I can evaluate it, I know the throat area, all what I need to do is configure the surface area such that I need a particular thrust and this is all a solid propellant rocket does. But it is not that easy as we shall see in the, in the subsequent class when I go through it, you will find yes, there is something much more to it. You know, I cannot just say therefore, I can write this equation as C f into I take the value of P c from here, I can now write it as S b to the power 1 over 1 minus n. What did I do? I take P equilibrium going as S b to the power 1 minus n, therefore, I write that here. Then I write the other terms together, namely I get A t. Now, A t is in the numerator here, A t is in the denominator here, therefore, 1 minus 1 by 1 minus n. I have just substituted the value of A t over here, minus 1 over 1 minus n, there, there I had it in the numerator and then I soak the other parameters namely A, the value of rho p into C star to the power 1 over 1 minus n, right. Therefore, you know this is a constant throat area is given. If I know the evolution of burning surface area as the surface regresses, I can find out the value of thrust and that is how a solid motor is designed. It is a simple geometric problem. We must be able to calculate what must be the value of S b and how S b the burning surface area in meter square evolves with time and this is what we will be considering in today's class. But before I do that, so far all what we have done is we took the burning rate law r is equal to a p to the power n. We considered explicitly the effect of pressure alone, but we said A includes the effect of temperature, initial temperature of the propellant. Like, like, Let us take an example. See, we can consider a temperature of the propellant to be ambient, that is a rocket motor is tested today, the temperature is quite hot today, maybe 32 degrees centigrade. Well, you all would have learnt about a solid propellant rocket which misbehaved in space shuttle. It was a Challenger rocket which was launched on a very cold day when the temperature was around 0 degree centigrade and we will look at that failure after completing this portion on solid propellant rockets. That day was quite cold around 0 degree centigrade. Well, we could have a missile which is operated from mountainous area near Himalayas where the temperature could be as low as minus 50 degree centigrade. What is the effect of burn rate on temperature? That is the initial temperature of the propellant itself. I am not looking at the flame temperature. All what I say is, well, I have a propellant block. The initial temperature of this block before it burns or just begins to burn is what I call as initial temperature. And here I have a flame and I am looking at the effect of initial temperature on the regression rate of this particular propellant. Maybe let us let us take a look at it, how, how I do this problem or how we can do it. We define a term known as temperature sensitivity factor. Let us see what it is. We would like to know how sensitive the burn rate is to temperature changes. Therefore, we were interested in finding out how the burn rate dr changes with temperature dt. And since I am considering the effect of temperature alone, I am considering at constant ambient pressure. Okay. But then instead of just saying burn rate variations with temperature or the variation in burn rate due to unit temperature, I now say fractional variation in burn rate and this is known as pi r or temperature sensitivity factor for burning factor, burning rate. In other words, we define a term like pi r is equal to this dr by r is d ln r divided by dt at constant pressure 
is defined as the temperature sensitivity factor for a solid propellant. And just like how did we measure R is equal to A p to the power n? We did two experiments at R at pressures P 1 and P 2 measured the burn rate R 1 and R 2 and n, n was equal to the value ln R 1 minus ln R 2 divided by ln P 1 minus ln P 2 and the same way this is also measured at different temperatures and typically the value of the, the factor phi r which defines the sensitivity to temperature is around 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. What should be the units? Well, ln r has no units, dr units cancel, it is only dt therefore degree centigrade inverse for 3 into 10 to the power 3 for typically for most composite propellants. This is equal to something like 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 degree centigrade for double base propellants and for HMX base propellants is even lower it is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3. And that is why for missiles you know you go for HMX propellants because it is not that sensitive to variations in temperature for degree centigrade inverse, degree centigrade inverse for HMX based or nitramine propellants. Well, I can go back and integrate this equation and find out explicitly how the burn rate changes with temperature. Let us let us do that. I, I take this expression over here. I write d ln r logarithm of burn rate is equal to pi r into dt at constant pressure. Okay. All I have taken is the change in the logarithmic burning rate is equal to pi r dt. I just write this equation and let us solve this equation. Let us let us say I do two sets of experiments. I have at temperature T1 the burn rate is R1, at temperature T2 the burn rate is R2 and I am interested in finding out the burn rate at a temperature T2 and therefore I just integrate out this I get ln R2 minus ln R1 is equal to pi R into T2 minus T1 ln R2 minus ln R1 is ln of R2 by R1 is equal to pi R into T2 minus T1 or rather I get R2 by R1 is equal to exponential of or e to the power of pi r into T2 minus T1. Therefore, if I know the burn rate at temperature T1 using the value of the temperature sensitivity factor, I can find out the burn rate at a temperature T2. And this is how the effect of variations of temperature is taken into account. I think we are now in a position to go back to designing solid rockets that means essentially find out how much area is required. But before I do that, let us go back and see are there any concerns we have about the burn rate equation because you know we are going to left and right use the value of burn rate in let us say millimeters per second or meters per second given by A p to the power n. What is the unit for R? We say yes meters per second if the burn rate is low millimeters per second, if the burning rate is fast maybe centimeters per second this is burn rate right linear burn rate we, we illustrated it by having something like a propellant and we found that it keeps regressing and the rate of regression is the burn rate. What is the unit of pressure here? Could be Pascal right. Let us say it, it will reflect Pascal could be mega Pascal could be atmosphere. Then what is the unit for A? The constant which depends on temperature which depends on composition the unit is going becomes a very clumsy it becomes something like meter per second unit of a meter per second divided by let us say pascal fundamental unit to the power n and this is not a correct way of doing something right 
you have a unit which is a constant which is a function of the parameters or the or the units what I use here and it is a I cannot say that my constant is so much meters per second to the power 0 0.3, 0 0.32 and all that it becomes little difficult to use. Therefore, how do I get, get over this problem because the anyway St. Robert's law and we derived this form of equation is found to be true. How do I get over this problem? Well, if I can find the burn rate, let us say I use a temperature or a pressure I call as reference pressure and I evaluate the burn rate R reference at this particular value A into P reference to the power n. And then I say I am interested in burn rate R at A a pressure to the power n. Then I can write the value of R now as equal to A instead of A I put R reference into P by P reference to the power n and this is one way I get over it. In other words the exponent what I have could be the burn rate at a given reference pressure provided the reference pressure is used for non-dimensionalizing the value of pressure and this is how the burn rate is expressed through a non-dimensional pressure which is based on the reference pressure and this reference pressure is normally taken as 70 atmospheres. You remember when we did nozzle we said under sea level condition when you evaluate the specific impulse or under vacuum we took the chamber pressure as 70 atmospheres because that is the normal pressure at which a solid rocket a good performing solid rocket works or this is equal to 7 MPa and therefore the burn rate law can now be written as R is equal to R at 70 bar or 70 atmospheres into pressure divided by 70 provided P is in atmosphere to the power n or if I am expressing in terms of mega Pascal R at 7 mega Pascal P is in mega Pascal 7 mega Pascal to the power n. This is at 7 mega Pascal same as 70 and therefore many books write the value of R as R is equal to A 70 they say this is your reference at 70 into P divided by 70 to the power n. You must remember immediately this we are talking of atmospheric pressure. Therefore, question is what is A 70? A 70 is the burn rate at the reference pressure of 70 bar. This is all about burn rates effect of temperature, but there are many more problems which may be I think I will postpone it slightly. Like for instance in a rocket chamber there could be velocity, I, there could be erosion, in there could be external heat flux those things maybe I will come back a little later, but let us go back and finish this portion on how do I go about designing a solid propellant rocket and that is the thrust of what I want to do today. But we have already told the answer right to get a particular thrust all what I want to find out is the evolution of the burning surface area. Let us do a simple problem and then go to something which by which I can evolve for a given thrust. Let us consider a, a propellant block which is contained in a motor case and this is what we said constitutes a solid propellant rocket and here I put insulation. I put a nozzle here, well I have a solid propellant rocket as it is. Now this particular propellant block is ignited over here and it burns from the end. That means the end of the propellant is ignited we call it as end burning because it burns from the end. It does not burn from here because this is prevented from burning. It cannot burn from this side it is prevented. The pr flame can go normally only in this particular direction. Now supposing the throat area of the nozzle is 80, 
what is the value of pressure over here? We have already done it, equilibrium pressure and that is equal to, let us write it down, rho p a c star s b divided by a t to the powers 1 over 1 minus n. Once I know the equilibrium pressure for a given value of s b, I know the value of burn rate r is equal to a p to the power n, I know the burn rate and therefore, if my grain has or the solid propellant end burning grain has a length l, the time over which the motor burns is equal to p is constant because the s b is a constant, p is a constant and therefore, t b is equal to the value of l divided by the length of the grain divided by the burn rate r which is equal to l divided by I have a p to the power n. That means, the thrust developed by this particular rocket, I know the value of pressure and the thrust developed is equal to C f p into a t. But what do I find? If I want a thrust and we said you know solid propellant rockets are generally used wherein you want large thrust as booster stages. Suppose I want thrust of several thousand tons, then in that case S b must be huge, it will be several kilometers and I cannot have solid propellant rockets whose diameter is going to be extremely, extremely large. What is it I am telling? We find that the thrust of an end burning charge as it were is going as burning surface area to the power 1 minus 1 by n. If my thrust is going to be large, S b is going to be large, well I need something like a large diameter rocket which I cannot really carry forward. Therefore, to be able to get some meaningful values, well why not I try some innovations in this. I have the propellant block, the same propellant block I take and maybe what I do is instead of burning it from the end. I burn it radially. In other words, I make a hole in the propellant block. I again put it in the motor case. This is my nozzle. And now, this is my propellant block here. I coat the propellant block here with some material which is an insulator which will prevent it from burning on this side. We call it as something which inhibits burning inhibitor. I coat it with, with, with a substance which will prevent the propellant from burning here. Then what I do? I ignite this surface area, the inside surface area, both these areas and then the we told ourselves if I take a cross section now what is it I get? I get maybe this is the outer surface, I have the case over here and then I have the inner diameter over here and this is my propellant. I take a cross section here. I ignite this internal surface of the propellant and the propellant burns. We said normal to the surface, it burns radially out and this type of burning is known as radial burning. Let me illustrate this, you know I, I thought you know I want to get into little more complicated areas. All what we said is here I have something like a let us say a propellant block like this. This burns from this side therefore, it gets consumed as it goes on. This we say is end burning. The same thing, the same area I take, I house it in a slightly larger diameter. Maybe I take this, I put it inside over here and now I have the annular area between the outer and inner which is propellant and now I ignite the surface area of this particular one and then what happens is the burning will progress. Let us say normal, let I, I put it over here, I have the annular surface area and the burning will progress normal to the surface area going like this. And therefore, now I have 
the initial burning surface area if I were to write for this expression let us write it down I will I'll use this part of the board. What did I have? This is my area, I have the inner area here, the propellant block like this. This is my length. All what I am saying is I have this one, all what I am telling is the annulus between the inner and the outer is what is getting burnt. This I say has diameter di, outer diameter is do. and the length of the propylene grain is r. Now, how does the burning take place? It takes place like this normal. In other words, burning proceeds and then I have thing burning over here. Therefore, what is my pressure over here? The initial burning surface area I have to calculate first. Initial burning surface area is equal to you could now tell me is equal to pi d i which is the perimeter into L and what is the final burning surface area is equal to pi do into the perimeter and therefore the pressure equilibrium to begin with pi is equal to pi dl into again i have carry over sp a c star divided by at to the power 1 by 1 minus n that means i am housing this in a nozzle the throat area is equal to A T over here, right. What is the change we have made? Now I have the entire length the pi d of it is burning and therefore I have a much greater burning surface area and therefore a, a radial burning grain which burns in this particular direction I can get S B to be much larger than in an end burning grain and therefore I can get a large value of thrust. This is one modification I can do, but you know there is some limit to it you know even if I have an area like this I cannot I, I still have I still need to have a particular diameter and a length is it possible to increase this area even further. In other words all what I am asking is this represents my initial burning surface area for a radial burning grain. Is it possible to increase this surface area by some means how can I do? If I can wrinkle these surfaces, I can wrinkle it in some form and how do I wrinkle it? I try to make a small model, maybe this was my original perimeter over here. I wrinkle the surface, I make stars on the inner surface. In other words, instead of having something like a cylinder over here, I make the inner surface in the form of a star. Now I find, well the star, this is something like a five vertices are there 5 vertex star and therefore now I find my surface area has increased enormously and therefore now I must be able to evaluate how the burning surface will evolve as it continues to burn. In other words this is my outer diameter the outer diameter will come over here and the burning surface will evolve along these surfaces and this is the problem which we must do. But however before doing this problem let us do the simple problem of maybe uh, uh, a radial burning grain burning from inside to outside what is the value of pressure and what is the time required for burning this because in the case of end burning what did we get? We got T was equal to length divided by A P n we knew how to calculate the pressure I knew the time taken to burn it. Can I do the same thing for a radial burning cylindrical grain? Let us do that. And let us also find out how the pressure will change. Well, I have the initial value of pressure is equal to whatever I have written there. Let us rewrite it by the di, which is the initial perimeter, L is the initial burning surface area, A rho p into C star divided by A t to the power 1 by 1 minus n. Right. Now, what is the final value of pressure when the burning has progressed? In other words, the burning progresses from the inner cylinder and reaches the outer cylinder. 
what is the value? The final value of burning surface area is going to be pi d o is a perimeter into L is the final burning surface area A rho p c star divided by A t to the power of 1 divided by 1 minus n. Now, is the pressure constant like in an end burning motor or is it a variable now? How would you look at it? That means, you know, d i has increased to d o. In other words, if I were to now plot the pressure and what is the pressure? Initially, the diameter is d i. The motor burns out till the diameter d o is reached. Let us let's, let's keep our terminology is very clear. This is the inner surface. It is over here. In between the two, I have an annulus. It starts burning from the inner diameter, reaches the outer diameter. When the diameter is d i, the pressure is p i. When the diameter d o is the final pressure p o and therefore, I know that d i is very much less than d o or less than d o. Therefore, initially the pressure is this let us say when it reaches the final value pressure could be higher therefore, the pressure increases. Whereas, in the end burning grain what did we have? We found at all values we had the same pressure versus let us say now the time or the distance let us say time I had a constant pressure. Is this all right? If this is all right, now I will ask myself one last question. If instead of having the grain start burning at the inner diameter and progressively burn to the outer diameter, I somehow put the case over here, I ignite the outer surface and then the flame propagates inward, then what is going to happen to me? I am going to get just the opposite. I am going to get the pressure as a function. Now, d o gets ignited, then it gradually the flame comes and comes to the inner part. That means, I start with a value of p final. That means, the initial value is now higher, the value is higher, the pressure drops. In other words, while the end burning grain gave me a constant pressure and therefore, a constant thrust a radial grain burning from inside to outside gave a progressive increase in pressure or a progressive increase in thrust, while a, a inward burning that means burning from outside to inside gave me a falling pressure and therefore, a falling thrust. Therefore, I could have three types of thrust evolution in such rockets and therefore, this is known as neutral burning. What should be the name for this? Progressively increases that is progressive burning. And this it keeps decreasing that means regressive burning. Therefore, all we have what, what we have been telling in the last few couple of minutes is, well, if I have a propellant which burns from toward from end to end, that means axial burning, well, the type of burning is neutral, constant pressure, constant thrust. If it is burning from radially from inside to the outside, the pressure keeps increasing, while if it burns from outside to inside, well, it could be regressive. Therefore, we could think in terms of three types of burning, neutral burning rockets, solid propellant rockets, progressive burning rockets and regressive burning rockets. Is it clear? If this is clear, question is you know what type of burning do you require? See, I cannot say I am making a rocket which is regressive, it is going to fly. Mission will demand something and what will mission demand? When the rocket takes up, the thrust must be high and as it goes up, the thrust can come down. Therefore, maybe something like this might be better than this because when the rocket goes up its mass is higher I cannot expect it to go with a higher acceleration at the beginning itself. Therefore, we have to somehow get balance what type of burning is required for a given system and that is where when we go into some shapes when we give these shapes to the internal that is what did I do here? We just took the inner surface 
we just wrinkled it. I could have wrinkled it in any shape. Why should I have to give a star? Star is one of the shapes. I could have wrinkled it into some other shape instead of giving a, a, a shape like a star over here. I could have given something like this. I could have given whatever shape I want and all what I have to calculate is how does the burning rate evolve around this surface. Can I find out how S b changes with time and once I know how S b changes with time, I know how the pressure changes with time and I will find out how the force or the thrust which the rocket will develop with time is known to me. And that is all what we do while designing solid propellant rockets. Therefore, to be able to do this, let us do a simple example today. Let us find out the time taken for a cylindrical grain. What do I say by a cylindrical grain? The first example, I have the end like this. I make a hole here. I have internal burning. It burns through like this. The, the diameter is let us say d i as what I have written here. The outer diameter is d o. The length is L, mind you I am repeating this figure. Question is can I predict how the pressure will change with time and how do I do it? it well, it is a simple problem. Well, well let us let's, let's, let's do it in a, in a minute. Let us say I have the outer diameter here d o. Here this is the initial diameter which we get started with d i. Let us consider a small part of the propellant gets burnt and let the small part be of thickness delta over a time let us say T delta. And then at the end of T delta I will calculate the pressure again. At the end of again 2 delta I will calculate the pressure again like that I can progressively calculate. And how do I do it? Well, I know that the pressure to begin with P i is this value. What is the pressure at the end instead of P i? I say what is the value at when the grain has reached this? It has started burning from inside. It has come to this level. What is the value of P delta? I want to use this equation and write it. Can you tell me? Well, I say pi. What is the value of D when the pro, when the thickness burnt is delta? Yes, D i plus 2 delta into I carry these things others are all constant A, burn rate constant rho p c star divided by throat area to the power 1 by 1 minus n. That means I know the value of pr pressure at this point, I know the value of pressure at this point. I want to know the time taken for delta of the propellant to get consumed. Therefore, the mean pressure between this and this is equal to p is equal to p i plus p at delta divided by 2 and therefore, the burn rate, the mean burn rate between the initiation to the that is from d i to d i plus 2 delta is equal to r bar mean value and what is that mean value equal to a p i to the power n plus a p delta to the power n divided by 2. R 1 is the burning rate at the initial condition. It has progressed by a factor delta in which case this becomes my pressure therefore, the burn rate has gone up divided by 2 and therefore, the time taken to burn a small quantity between d i to d i plus 2 delta is called as d delta is equal to delta divided by r bar. Okay. Now, I do the same thing. I now take this as the initial condition. I go to the next step. I find the value of the value of t consumed. I get the value of t consumed and then I can put the whole thing together and say as a function of time my pressure increases from p i, I know all the intermediate values, I know the final pressure is p f which is given over here and this is how the pressure evolves 
in a so in an inner burning rocket. We can do this, but this is a numerical way of doing this. There is no other way of doing, and it, this is the way to do a problem because when I have more complex configuration, like what I said, I wrinkle the inner surface, I get all these shapes, I can find out how the surface would should evolve with time. And this is how one calculates the variation in pressure with time. Once I know the variation in pressure with time, I can readily go ahead and say that the thrust characteristic with respect to time will also change in this particular way. This is how a solid propellant rocket involving radial grain is, is made. Let us let's do one more small problem. I supposing I am asked to find out the time taken to burn a propellant, to burn a radial, now I am using a slightly radial grain between d i to outer diameter the length of the grain being L. The same problem, the same thing what I am considering, the initial diameter is d i, the final diameter is d o, the length is L of the grain, I want to find the time taken to burn this. I do exactly the same thing, you know there is nothing more to do, it is again I consider a section over here, the initial diameter is d i outer diameter is d o. Why not do a simple thing like what we say is let us consider any diameter d let us find out the time taken for the diameter d in between d i and d o to increase from the value d to a value d plus a small change over here. And this I say the diameter has increased to d plus a small amount d d. If I can find the time taken to burn this part, I can integrate out between this and this and find the time taken and that is what I will be doing. Let us do that, how do I do it? How do I get the time taken to, to burn a distance d d? Well, I know that this distance d d is very small. Therefore, the pressure could be the value at d and therefore, the pressure is equal to we again write it S b is equal to pi d perimeter into length is the burning surface area into rho p a c star divided by a t to the power 1 by 1 minus n. Therefore, what is the burning rate r is equal to a p to the power n. Now, I, I, I substitute the value instead of p I substitute this value over here I get this becomes this one let us write it again pi d l rho p a c star by a t to the power n by 1 minus n is the burn rate when it is here. What is the time taken to burn a small distance d d? Time taken let us say d t is equal to diameter is increased from d to d plus d d. Therefore, this thickness is equal to d d divided by 2 that is the spatial length divided by r which is the time taken. Okay. And what is this come out to be? Now, I find pi is a constant, length is a constant, d is variable, rho p is a constant, all these are variables except n. Therefore, I can write this as equal to d d divided by 2 divided by, I take all the constants to the power n minus 1 as let us say a and then I have this a over here and then I write it as d to the power n by 1 minus n. Please let us check if it is all right. All what we are telling is this has units of length say meters divided by meter per second this is the time taken 
you have you have dd by 2 is the distance propagated through a small distance dd by 2 divided by a into I club all the factors other than this in terms of a over here whereas a is equal to pi l rho p a c start by a t to the power n by 1 minus n that is a into d because the variable into n by 1 minus n. I have to integrate out and what is it I have to integrate the time taken to burn from here to here it is at 0 let us say the time taken to burn is T b time taken for burning b small b denoting the burn time therefore I get d t goes from start to the end which is the burn time which must be now equal to as it goes from initial diameter to the outer diameter and the value of variation is dd divided by 2 divided by d to the power n by n minus 1 and I can take a and a outside which is equal to 1 by a into a so these are all constants all right. Now what do I get on integration I get tb minus 0 therefore tb is equal to 1 over 2 a into the exponent of the burning rate law. Now I integrate it d to the power that is n d to the power I get if I bring it up it is d to the power minus n divided by n minus 1 therefore this becomes 1 minus n by n minus 1 is it all right I had d over here I brought it d n minus 1. I take it up it is d minus n by n minus 1 and therefore integrate out I must also get divided by 1 minus n by minus 1 was it n minus 1 or 1 minus n 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 what is the final value therefore this is equal to 1 by 2 a a into 1 minus 2 n divided by 1 minus n that means 1 minus n divided by 1 minus 2 n in the denominator I am sorry into d o to the power 1 minus 2 n divided by 1 minus n minus d i into 1 minus 2n divided by 1 minus n. This is the time taken for the burning rate. It is possible to have a closed form expression and this is the value. Please check whether there are any mistakes in this. Therefore, we are able to find out the burn time, but now I will ask you a question. If n is equal to 0 0.5, what is the time for burning? We said as long as n is less than 1, it is all right for us. If n is equal to 0 0.5, what will be the value of burnt time? Let us do it. 1 minus 1 is 0. If there is a problem, that means this, why, why is it not usable? Can we ask ourselves what, what has gone wrong? We have done it correctly, but it is not working at n is equal to 0.5 y. Can somebody, somebody come out with an answer? Well, this seems to be the problem, and how do I do this problem? I think we should be able to analyze it. Let us go backward. Our integral is dt or tb is equal to let me write that 1 over a a into integral d i to d o of what d d by 2 divided by d to the power 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 and therefore it is equal to d d that means I will take 2 over here and this gives me for n is equal to 0.5 I get 2a 
ln of d o by d i. That means, what happens for 0 0.5 I need to use a ln form, because you know the point is when I substitute this I will not be able to get for n is equal to 0 0.5. And similarly, if n is equal to 1 I get all erratic things and we found n is equal to 1 is not possible. We are able to get all the solutions under the limiting cases. And this is how a cylindrical grain is will be designed. Therefore, what is it we have done in today's class? We looked at the effect of temperature on burn rate. We also defined the value of A as A 70 at a reference pressure of 70 bar. Then we learned how to develop an equation for thrust and pressure for an end burning grain. We also did for a radial burning grain. But we found for radial burning grain the pressure evolution had to be done by in increments while the burning time we could solve using this particular equation. I continue with this in the next class and in the next class we will do something little bit more. We will look at the evolution of burning surface area from something like a star grain, maybe n, n types of vortices and also look at different forms of grain shapes which are used in practice and the reasons for it. After that we will summarize the whole thing on solid propellant rockets by incorporating maybe the igniter and other aspects into the solid propellant rockets right well thank you then